Tucson. So Tucson gets its name from this mountain. We call it A Mountain because it has this big A on it from the University of Arizona. But that mountain was the place that the Papago Indians sent their smoke signals from. And it, they said Tucson, meaning to send a message. And the top of it was black when white men came in there. There's a road up there now, and you can drive up that road over there, come around and park right here. And you look out and see the city, and the next one down. You look out and you see the city like that. This is a cat in the mountains. This man called this right here the piano top. That right there is called Finger Rock, where the pillar of fire came down from marriage and divorce. Sabino Canyon is over here, this canyon right around between these two. But if you take these mountains, and if I can show you a panoramic view, this city is on the opposite side of the city of, of, the, of the world from Jerusalem. Jerusalem is 2,400 foot above sea level. This is 2,700 feet above sea level. They have the same climate over there. We have the same climate they do. Same type of vegetation grows in both places. This one's surrounded by mountains, and this is the end of the Rocky Mountains. If you go to Israel, right at the end of Mount Carmel, you will find Elijah's grotto where he lived. You go to the end of this mountain, you'll find this man's home. You take the name of these mountains and take the first letter of each one of them, as I call them. Catalina. Hitchcock. On this side of town is Rincon. Over here is the Ringo, I mean, uh, Ingram. Over on this side of town is the Santa Ritas. Over west of town is the Tucson. C-H-R-I-S-T. It is an anointed place. God knew where to send his prophet to receive a message known as the seven seals, the revelation of marriage and divorce for the bride to know what to do in the end time and what day in which we live. Amen. Tucson, Arizona. Sabino Canyon, a place he went the first week of January 1963 and you parked your car, you get on a little shuttle bus four dollars down and ride the two and a half miles up to the top of the canyon. He parked his car right there, got out of his car and walked up behind that bush. Looked up an unfinished road right here. And right there, he walked around there, went up that game trail and wound up right on top of those rocks. And that's where the sword appeared in his hand. He prayed for people. He not only told them what was wrong with them, but he began to tell them the secrets of their hearts. And he literally had thousands of these visions, as I have mentioned it to you. Now, December the 22nd, 1962, right over in Jeffersonville, Indiana, he had a vision. And in that vision, he was sitting on the side of a mountain. And there was a cuckaburr in his trouser leg. Now, you'd be amazed that wherever I go in the world, I have to go to great length to explain what a cuckaburr is, but you people in Kentucky, you know what it is, so that's sufficient. You just got a five-minute shorter sermon than, than most people would get. But in this vision, he was sitting on the side of the mountain, and there was a cuckaburr on it, and there was an explosion occurred, and seven angels came. Now, he told that vision right over here in his church in Jeffersonville, on, on watch night, December the 31st, 1962. It's recorded on tape, and everybody heard about it, and it was recorded in a sermon entitled, Sirs, Is This the Time? Now, the first week of January, 1963, he moved from Jeffersonville, Indiana, with his family to Tucson, Arizona. And he was there the second week of January, he was supposed to go up to Phoenix, Arizona and preach the convention for the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship International. But on Monday or Tuesday before that Wednesday, he got up and he went into a place there that's called Sabino Canyon. And he was wondering, what does this vision mean? Even though he had thousands of them, in this explosion... He'd begin to wonder, well, is this the Lord showing me that uh, he's through with my life and my ministry? And like Moses, he's going to send the angels to pack me off, you know, and, and take my spirit home. And he was, just, he was just a human being. He, just, he was troubled about it. And he went up there that day, and 
his wife was with him and he parked the car at the head of the canyon he got out and he was he was a great hunter he had that in his kentucky blood he he loved to squirrel hunt but he was he was in great physical shape and he found the game trail and he just went right up the side of the mountain and he walked up there in some jagged rocks and the sun was just coming over the mountain top and striking there and he he says when he walked up in there he felt the presence of the lord and he raised his hands up and he said oh lord he said what, what does this mean and he uh, does this mean my death or, or Lord what does it mean and he said a sword struck his hand now I had him tell me this a number of times and he'd always pick up something and he'd say brother green it was just as real as that I got right there in my hand he said it wasn't a vision he said he, he, said, he said it wasn't a dream he said it was a sword in my hand and he described it and, and, and how it looked, it was double-edged and sharp, and he was always afraid of big knives. Whenever he'd go hunting, Brother Donnie Wirtz is here, and he'd testify, he always carried a little hunting knife. He, he didn't like big, long swords or anything, but, but he was afraid of it, and a voice spoke out and said, Fear not, for that's the king's sword. And he said, Oh, oh, uh, oh, the sword of a king, like a, like a king knights people. And the voice came back, Not a king, the king. Now, if I had a sword here tonight to show you and tell you that this is a sword that was in Brother Bram's hand, it wouldn't make a believer out of you. You, you just have to say, well, well, uh, how do I know that was a sword? Well, uh, you, you have to know him and, and understand that he had no motive for telling you other than to just say it happened. But it was something that gave him great courage and he, he lost his fear of that vision because when God had given him those signs with the angel about the sign in his hand, he began to call that first pull. When he knew the secrets of the heart, he began to call that second pull. And then when he began to speak the word and reveal these things, he began to call that a third pull. And he said that, that he didn't call it a sign or a wonder or a miracle, but it was just a phase, a change in his ministry, in his life, that progressively began to happen. And so whenever he began to see this, he began to realize, well, maybe God's got something else that he wants to accomplish in my life. He went on and he preached the meetings in...